Hi there, Dolly and Minnie friends. I am so happy you came back to visit me today. One of the things I like to do is watch other YouTubers make minis and see their different techniques and how they do things. I often tell myself, oh, I'm gonna try that, and then I never do, but today, I am going to try it. I have three things that I wanna make from three of my favorite YouTubers. They're probably some of your favorite YouTubers also. If you don't know them, there'll be links to their channels in my description box. Go check them out. Today, I'm going to make little Crocs out of these glass jars. I saw Deb from Doll's House Dilemmas do this on her channel and I absolutely fell in love with these. They looked so realistic. Um, yeah, and I really, really wanted to try them because I think they'll look good in my doll's house kitchen, which I'm going to be working on next. My other rooms are always in progress, but I'm gonna try working on these. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing some just plain white glue with some paint and I'm just kind of, you know, doing what I always do, which is wing it, just mixing some colors, some off-white, um, and trying to see if I can get that kind of croc color. So I'm using this color, which I think is just called vanilla. It's just acrylic paint and I'm using just a tiny, tiny bit of brown and any brown that you have will do. So the only paint are the vanilla and the brown, and then I'm using some plain white glue. I'm just adding a little more there. So I thought that would help the paint stick to the glass a little bit more. I was trying to find a way to get the jars to be still so I could paint them, and I like using clay to hold a lot of my minis still. I do use the masking tape as well, but sometimes I'm too rough and I knock them off of that. So I really like to use the clay. I decided to just very gently sand the jars. You wanna be really careful because it would be pretty easy to break them. I thought it might give it a little more of that porous look that you see with Crocs sometimes. I really don't know, I'm just experimenting. I did it just a very little bit. It will take several coats to get these completely covered and that's good for me because I will have a chance to exercise my patients which is always in need of exercise. It's important to let those coats dry thoroughly between, let each coat dry thoroughly before you do the next one. While those dry, I'm going to move along to my next project. I saw Jolene on Tiny Keyhole Minis make these adorable hangers, and I thought, I really want to do that. I don't have any wardrobe or closet or anything like that in my doll's house, but I just really wanted to do this sweet project. She covered some of hers with vintage fabric and I thought I might do that but I changed my mind. I was just happy making the wire ones. They're very easy to do and I'm going to show you how I did mine. I did some like the one I'm measuring here that were a more vintage style. So this one turned out a little bit too big. I don't know what scale it would be but it doesn't really matter. It's a lot of fun and pretty easy to make these. I'll show you the wire I used in just a moment, but you could really use whatever wire you have on hand, even a paper clip. In fact, I found a paper clip on the ground the other day and it already looked like a little hanger. I used my little clips, which I bought at the dollar store, uh, to help me form the hangers. If you're great at freehanding it, by all means do that. This is the wire that I used. You can see it's 0.8 millimeter diameter um, would be the gauge. 
like I was saying, you can freehand it or you could use something to form your wire around to keep things even. And I definitely need some help like that. Give yourself a nice long piece to work with, not too long though. And I just wanted to show you that it's about an inch wide and it'll be it'll end up a little bit larger with the bending. So I just bent it up around the sides there just to keep it nice and even. And then I wanted to evenly cross those sides. Now it does slip around when you start to twist, so just go slowly. You can use your needle nose pliers to give it a gentle pinch. Be very gentle when you're handling the wire because it does break very easily. I twisted it twice and then I used the end of my smallest paintbrush to bend the hook. And then I just kind of eyeballed it. Um, I clipped off the long end there and then I kind of eyeballed it to see what looked just what looked correct in terms of cutting off the end there. And I was just so happy with these. They're so fun and easy to make. And I am going to age them a little bit, so you'll see that in a minute. But I wanna show you how I made the more vintage ones. This style would have been more popular in the early part of the 20th century. I'm going to use the clip end of my larger clamps for this one. It's requires just a little more patience because you have to pinch the end of it and then keep it open. If you have some other thing that will give you that same shape and keep your wire straight or you just want to freehand it, that's absolutely appropriate. It's just kind of whatever works for you. This is what worked for me. So this one you want to fold a little more flat and then going in a little bit, give it a couple twists on either end and it will naturally come down in the middle and then you want to wrap that wire where my thumb is over a couple times there to get you the upper twist. And then it's the same thing in terms of folding it over with over the over something to get the little hook. And then the end, I'm gonna. Uh, bend it upward a little bit because if you look at some of the old hangers the hook end bends up just ever so slightly and then the ends you want to bend down just a little bit to give it that little bit of a curve and I just love the way these turned out. I could make these all day. It's very relaxing and very satisfying because they look just like hangers. And there were many other styles too. So do some research, find some pictures and bend some wire. It's so much fun. Now I'm going to age them a little bit to make them look a little more authentic. I'm gonna use some black rub and buff on these and I'm gonna use a little bit of gold rub and buff also. I'm putting on some gloves because I am gonna go back to my Crocs and I don't want any of this on my fingers, which I always end up with despite my precautions. I'm using one of my little microfiber brushes because the wire is so tiny. I'm gonna start with my large oddball one. That way, if I end up not liking it, no harm done. I still have my smaller ones and can try something else. looks good so I want to just keep going I'm not trying to cover it completely um, they would have a patina so it would the coloring would vary
Happy with those. Let me move on to the next ones. I'm using antique gold for these. Let those dry completely and check on my jars. I want to concentrate on the upper part, the mouth of the jars, since that was stuck in the clay. So I want to get that at least to have one coat on before I proceed. So I'm just adding a little bit right there. The hangers are dry. Don't they look cute? I just love them. I'm going to buff them off just a little bit. The gold ones were just a little too shiny and new, so I wanted to age them up a little bit more with just some black paint, some acrylic paint, and I'm just putting the tiniest bit of it on my finger kind of like dry brushing but just with my finger. I often find my finger to be a very handy paintbrush. What do you think? Do you like them? I like them. Now I just need a wardrobe. Are you wondering what's next? My friend Lisa at Miniature Things by Lisa recently made the most adorable books. She used end papers and everything. She had vintage paper and she made it look so easy. I've been wanting to try it. I have this old nursing education catalog and a kid leather glove. She bought some beautiful leather from um, a leather worker. Uh, I don't have anything like that here, but I do buy kid leather gloves to help with doll repair and they work fine for mini books. You can cover them in that. You could also buy faux leather. So I'm just trying to prepare something here um, to use and I'm not sure how this is going to work out because it's stapled so probably not a good idea Let me see what else I have. Ooh, looks like that's perforated But it just that would be really convenient, but it's just those first couple pages which are the survey pages So yeah, that's not gonna work I didn't have any old books that I was willing to part with, but I have some old monthly prayer devotionals and I thought I would use those. I like the way they were bound. They, they have all the pages bound on the edge. So I'm gonna try those. I peeled it apart to a thickness I thought might be appropriate and now I'm trying to gauge how wide I want it to be. I thought I was being careful, but I can already see how uneven it is from the top part to the bottom. But I'm going to plow on, I think, um, because I guess I could make some in different sizes. But I do want to add the end papers. That was one of my favorite things that Lisa did. I'm just trying to see how much of the leather I'm going to need and where I might want to cut it, if I want to cut it in more than one piece. Uh, it would have served me well to watch Lisa's video at least one more time before I started, but Alas, I did not do that. 
I'm using some paper that I photocopied from the end paper of a vintage book of mine. It was actually Little Women. I don't recommend doing this because the copy paper is just so flimsy and it's just, I recommend using either like a scrapbook paper or if you have an old piece of dollhouse wallpaper, just the copy paper and the paper of this inexpensive um, catalog just soaks up the glue and ultimately just kind of made a mess. But yeah, if you have a nicer paper, Lisa used the inside of an envelope that she received or a card, some stationery, something that's a nicer quality paper. Cardstock might might work. It might be a little heavy, but it would probably work better than the photocopy paper. So you can see I'm trying to be neat. I'm just using white glue and my little silicone brush. So far so good and I feel like I was doing a fair job. And then I had a Berenstain Bears moment. Do you remember the Berenstain Bears books? Well, there was a book called The Bike Lesson where the daddy bear tries to teach his little son bear how to ride a bike. And he shows him all these things and he crashes and gets into trouble. And he says, see small bear, this is what you should not do. So I am telling you, small friends, this is what you should not do. Lisa does not do this in her video, but because I didn't restudy, I just plowed ahead and did not let my papers dry. So everything is soaking wet with glue and I'm about to add my leather. So pretending as if I didn't completely muss my books, I went back to my Crocs and I'm adding more paint. I'm using some toothpicks in the clay now. They're starting to get there a little bit, but they definitely need more paint. So I'm gonna go ahead. Okay, back to the books. Well, it all seems like it's going to be fine, doesn't it? But I'm using a completely inappropriate ruler. I should be using something flat and metal, and I'm doing it horizontally when I should turn them around the other way, and I'm holding it crooked besides, and the size is completely wrong that I'm doing. So I just continue <laughs> in this manner. It's, it's, it's painful to watch a little bit, but you're just gonna have to endure it, small bear, so you can learn from my mistakes. We're just gonna speed through this part because it's a little bit gory and you can certainly cover your eyes. I know I will be covering my eyes. <laughs> So I do get one kind of decent looking book with the end paper. A lot of it stuck together and a lot of the pages came out. Um, yeah, we'll get to my lessons to be learned in a little bit. I did make some sad little attempts to improve their shoddy appearance, but I don't know if it made it better or worse. The crocs are getting there. I'm happy with the color, but I wanna add a little more texture. So I'm using 
one of those sponges that I bought on Timu and I just cut a little piece off of it and I'm using some brown paint really like barely there I really I put too much on the sponge and I'm trying to dab it off there and I'm really just going very gingerly across the top there and unfortunately I'm out of frame sorry about that I'm trying to uh, concentrate <laughs> You can see how dry it is. There's barely any on there, but it gives just the right effect. I think it's beginning to look like crockery. What do you think? Now repeating with the other one. I could not be happier with the way these turned out and I can't wait to add some more details. I added just the tiniest bit of detail to the Crocs and then I put the lightest coat of just white glue over the top of it and I could not be happier with these Crocs. Thank you so much to all my friends who originally did these projects and I hope they don't mind that I took a stab on it and am sharing it with everyone. Thank you so much also to all my new subscribers. It is so exciting to meet you all and find people who enjoy the same things I do. And a very special thank you to all my existing subscribers. Please go watch Lisa, Jolene, and Deb's channels. I'll put links to their channels in my description box and see the expert way which they executed these projects. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and come back and visit me next time in the doll cupboard.